Hello and welcome to Possession Football. Well, there is a great summer of international football coming up with games from both the European Championship and Copa America dominating the summer. Today we start our series of previews for those two competitions, starting with Group A's first team, Turkey. While Turkey failed to qualify for the 2018 FIFA World Cup and finished bottom of their Nations League group, but they had a brilliant qualifying campaign, finishing second in a group containing world champions France and even getting a win against the Euro 2016 runners-up, qualifying in second but then they came bottom of their next Nations League group again and got relegated to Division C. They've started 2022 World Cup qualifying well though. Two wins and a draw including a win against the Netherlands. They have three friendlies between now and the start of the tournament. Azerbaijan, Northern Ireland and Moldova all at home and it'll be interesting to see what tactics they use in those games. They are in Group A, they will play the opener with against Italy in Rome and play against Switzerland and Wales in Baku and that is virtually a home crowd uh, given the uh, strength of the ties between the two nations. And uh, there you can uh, look at the qualifying results. You see that they started with three wins and despite, despite a loss in Reykjavik, they didn't lose again and they qualified with relative ease. Now, the manager is Şenol Güneş and he has, uh, well, he was a legendary player in Turkish football, playing for the Trabzon sport team that won six league titles. Uh, he also came runner-up in the league three times, uh, won three Turkish Cups and one runner-up in that, and six Turkish Super Cups and two runners-up in that. He joined the team as an assistant as early as 1988, so it's, and it's been a long and successful managerial career. Uh, his first job was at Bolu Spor, then came Istanbul Spor, but when he returned to Trabzon Spor, as a manager, he got his first silverware, two Turkish Cups and a Turkish Super Cup. He also came runner-up in the league time. Antalya Sport and Sakarya Sport were next for a season, but his next job would be the most important. This was his first spell of Turkey manager, and uh, he led the team to third place in the 2002 FIFA World Cup. Absolutely unbelievable performance. He was the coach of uh, in UEFA's Team of the Year, and considered the third best national team coach in the world by the IFFHS. He also got a, uh, a national honour, Turkey's State Medal of Distinguished Service, perhaps uh, similar to an MBE or OBE in this country. However, his side failed to qualify for Euro 2004 when he was sacked. He then returned to Trabzonspor in 2005, getting the team to second in the league. He took his first job outside Turkey at FC Seoul in Korea Republic, and he guided them to second in the league in the league cup, but missed out on the tr trophy. A third spell at Trabzonspor followed. He won a Turkish Cup and Super Cup, again got his team to second in the league. Then he came Bursa Spor, who he got second in the Turkish Cup. But then at Besiktas, he finally got the trophy he was missing. His first two Super League titles, as well as runner-up in the Turkish Super Cup twice. In 2019, he retook the Turkey job. And he's one of the most decorated characters in Turkish football. A long list of uh, honours and uh, probably no better man to take this challenge on. Well, we've talked about the gaffer. Now let's talk about the squad. They've named a preliminary squad of 30. Uh, with this expanded European Championship, 26 players were allowed in the squad. So one goalkeeper and three outfield players will have to be cut. And uh, in a second, we'll talk about who uh, I think will be cut from the team. But let's start at the goal with the goalkeepers. Mert Gunok, who's from Istanbul, Basaksa here. Now his club has had a pretty horrible season defending their title uh, by, well, coming in 12th. And he hasn't even been trusted there. He's been rotated with uh, Volkan Babakan. He, is, he played every game in the qualifiers, that's the Euro 2020 qualifiers, except for one. But he was dropped for the World Cup qualifiers in Ugo Sanchez here. He's been in good form since returning to his club side earlier this month, keeping a clean sheet in all three games. But it does look unlikely he will be starting. Well, now let's talk about Ugo Sanchez here. He's the Trabzonspor captain and has played every game bar three this season for his side. 
And since replacing Gnock in goal for the World Cup qualifiers, he looks in pole position to start in the Euros. He's been pretty impressive for his club side too. Altai Bayende, uh, uncapped. He is Fenerbahce number one though, and he has had a good season. He's returned from injury just in time for the Euros, but it's unlikely that uh, he'll start ahead of Chukir this season. Gokan Akan uh, from Riza Sport. He's not been called up uh, for the squad for the March 2021 World Cup qualifiers and probably won't make the final tournament. He's had an all right season, although he's in the last two games he has conceded eight goals, but it looks very unlikely he'll get in unless something happens to Gunokchuk here or by India. Okay, we will now head on to the defenders and eight of those have been named, including Zeki Celik, who uh, I don't think in his wildest dreams would have expected the season he has. He's uh, been a key player for a team that's almost certainly going to win a French title this season. And uh, there's no reason he won't be regularly starting for Turkey this season. His deputy at Turkey is Mert Mulder of Sassuolo, who played in the games that Celik missed with coronavirus in March for Turkey. But uh, I think that's all who will be a deputy for Celik, but good experience for the youngster. Meri Demidau, uh, he's had a pretty injury-plagued season. Of course, Juventus finally losing their league title. But uh, a centre-back who can also play it right back. He was regularly starting for Juve before his injuries. And I think he will be a key part of Turkey's team. An interesting case is Ozan Kabak who's uh, found himself dropped from the Liverpool side as of late, but did deputise for Demiral when he was injured and uh, will probably find some sort of playing time in the tournament. It's just unlikely it will be the starting eleven uh, if Demiral is fit. And, it, and he is only 21, remember, so whatever happens, this will be great experience. In fact, uh, Juve, uh, Turkey's three centre-backs, 23, 21 and 24, which is pretty amazing. Kaglar Soyuncu uh, from Leicester has been brilliant all season. He was brilliant last season and now he has a FA Cup trophy to show for it. He has had injury problems this season, but he's returned well. And uh, and, and if he stays in good whack, he will be a pretty nailed on starter, you'd imagine. Khan Ihan, who will be fourth choice, uh, has only really found irregular playing time, even for Sassuolo, but uh, there mostly is a backup. Umut Medash from Le Havre, uh, who's played, will be Turkey's first choice left back this season. Of course, playing in the France's second tier isn't really uh, as high a level as the other three players, but sometimes that happens in national football. We'll see how he gets on at the European Championship because that is a completely different level. Uh, and finally, Ridvan Yilmaz of Besiktas, the youngster. Uh, he's never even been in a Turkey squad before, never mind getting capped. And this t uh, tournament may come a little too soon, but even though he has played well at Besiktas, he'll probably just be a backup to the more experienced Marash. But again, it will be great experience being in the squad at international tournament. I still think he'll make the 26 because he's one of only two right backs whose main position is a right back, but uh, unlikely he gets ahead of Merash just yet, but I think one for the future, maybe by the World Cup, he will be starting. Well, we'll now head on to the midfielders. And uh, there's quite a few of those to get through. We'll start with Abdul Kadir Umar of Trabzonspor. And he was a regular starter for his club before his injury. Um, but his injuries have whacked him out of the last two Turkey squads. Now he's backed, but he still never started a game for Turkey. I think he'll be a player that maybe gets uh, irregular time at the tournament. Chengiz Under will get anything but, despite struggling for regular game time at Leicester this season, he is the first choice for Turkey at right wing or uh, right midfield, depending on the formation. He hasn't played a single minute of football since February, but I think the friendlies will be a, a chance to get him back match fit again. And as I said, even despite his lack of playing time in that position, Turkey don't really have anyone better. Efekan Karaka, uh, the Alanya Sport captain, 
uh, is probably going to be his backup right wing. Uh, there's <laughs> quite a li little to say to him. He's an all right deputy, but even with Under uh, struggling for game time, I just think Chingiz Under is a different class of player to him. Next is Halil Akbanar of Goz Tepe, who is the captain, uh, and it's another right winger. And I think for him, it will be unlikely he'll make uh, the final tournament. Uh, if he, it will be between Karaka and Akbanar to make the final tournament, and I just think Karaka is ahead of him. Dorukan Tokos is next. That's the uh, central midfielder, but he struggled for regular time at Besiktas. Uh, he's got a lot of versatility, which will probably mean Gunej will think he's a useful player to take for this tournament. But he's definitely not going to be a regular starter. A sort of jack of all trades, but master of none. Irfan uh he's another central midfielder. He's had a pretty impressive season. Uh, and again, quite versatile. He can play as attacking midfielder on both wings. And uh, again, he's probably a useful player to just bring on and help boost the squad. Mamut Tekdemir is the club captain of Istanbul Basaksa here. And it's a, he's a central midfielder, a more defensive-minded one. And he can also play as a defender. He's definitely in a shout, but I think he's uh, probably third choice in that defensive midfielder position behind uh, Yokushalu and Tufan. So he'll be in the squad, but probably not as a starter. Speaking of Okai Yokushalu, even though he's played for a relegated team, he's been quite good since making his lone move to West Brom. And he's definitely a starter for his country. Orkan Kukchu, uh, fire from Feyenoord, he's a very good prospect. Played quite well this season in the Eredivisie. I think this tournament might just come too soon for him to be starting regularly. But uh, it will be good experience for him and he will probably get some minutes. Ozan Tufan, uh, who has been a another central midfielder or defensive midfielder for Turkey in that 4-2-3-1. And he's almost certainly going to be a regular starter. Thailand Antalya Lee, uh, a defensive midfielder, another backup in that position. In fact, uh, he's mostly filling in at centre midfield from the bench in the last international break. Hakan Chalanoglu from AC Milan. He's a nailed on starter, playing regularly for a team like Milan. There aren't too many players like that in uh, the turkey side he can also play he can play either on the left wing or as a number 10 uh, and he, uh, he's one of uh, the top the players with the most class in the turkey team yusuf yazici another member of turkey's leal contingent and he has mostly been an attacking midfielder although he sometimes has played as a striker as well he's gotten 14 goals for the uh, french league leaders this season and uh, he has a lot of versatility. He can, as I said, attacking midfielder, striker. He can also play on the right wing. And I think there's definitely a place for him in the starting 11 this tournament. And uh, we have five more players, the forwards, starting with another Lille man, Burak Yilmaz, who is uh, Turkey's captain. Um, he scored 17 goals this season. And uh, assuming he's fit, because he has had a few injury problems this season, he's pretty much a nailed on starter for Turkey. Uh, as I said, captain and just all all round uh, their main goal threat. And as you now, he's a striker, but he's not that prolific one. Prolific one only scoring two goals and twenty caps for Turkey. He hasn't really scored many for Hatasfe this season, but he's uh, a backup behind Hilmaz. What's his role? Halil Ibrahim Dervishoglu uh, has had injury issues this season, but he's finished the season strongly. It's his first call up for the national team, and I just think he's one of the four players most likely to be cut uh, because there's two strikers ahead of him. You don't really need three centre forwards when you play a 4 2 3 1. And uh, Kenan Karaman, he's a, a more versatile player, central centre forward, left wing, right wing. Uh, he's probably going to just be another backup attacking option. Uh, he will probably make the final cut. But uh, he's not somebody that would be regularly starting, I'd imagine. Kerem Akter Koglu, who uh, has never been in the first team squad before. A left winger. He's also played as a right winger. And he's done all right this season for Galatasaray. But I 
don't I think he's one of the four players that will be cut. So uh, just to be clear, I think Akan Akbenar, Dervis Shoglu and Akter Koglu will be the four players to be left behind. But uh, we'll find out soon enough if I'm right. So in terms of formation, Turkey haven't really been consistent. In the qualifiers, and I stress that uh, Gunej uh, joined midway through, they decided to uh, switch between a 4-1-4-1 and a 4-3-3 with 1DM, which is quite an attack more attacking formation. He's uh, experimented with a 4-2-3-1 in the Nations League, um, and also a more defensive-minded 4-4-2 against Latvia with uh, Jokushlu and Tufan sitting back. I think a 4-2-3-1 is the most likely pick. But I think uh, the friendlies will be more very revealing in terms of his style because I think uh, he'll probably want to be set on one formation for the final tournament. In terms of a predicted starting eleven, I think Chakir will be the goalie, Shelik at right back, Demirau and Soyuncu will be the centre back pairing, Merash on the left, Yokushlu and Tufan as the defensive midfielders, Undev on the right. Yazici at number 10, Chahanoglu at left wing, and Burak Yilmaz as the striker. Well, again, another thing we'll find out if I'm right. But I hope you enjoyed that video. We're going to be doing these for every country at Euro 2020 and Copa America. And I hope that uh, you'll join us. There'll be plenty of content during the tournament as well. So if you're interested, like, subscribe, leave a comment, and uh, I'll see you for the next team, which is Italy.